Hello again. I said we were going to be graphing quadratic functions without making tables, and that's exactly what we're going to start by doing. And one way of doing that is by factoring. If you can factor a problem, not all problems you can factor, so you can't always do this. But if it's a problem you can factor, if you want to see some tips on factoring, go back to the previous lessons on factoring, you can be able to find uh, the zeros of an equation. And I'll explain what that means as I go through this. But let me go ahead and explain this problem. This says the function of x equals x squared, subtract 2x, subtract 3. Uh, if you remember my tangent about functions, f of x just basically means y. Well, it means your output value and you can just replace it with a y. I, mean, I suppose some people would, wouldn't really like that explanation, but I really don't care. It makes things easier for students. So here we go. I've got y. equals x squared minus 2x subtract 3. I can actually factor x squared subtract 2x subtract 3. Uh, go back to your own notes if you want to see it. But I can factor it in two binomials. Uh, there is no GCF, so I don't have to worry about taking out something beforehand. I know x squared times, uh, excuse me, x times x is x squared. And I know a positive times a negative is a negative. And I know that it's going to be negative 3 plus 1, because that's going to give me a negative 3 when I multiply, but give me a negative 2 when I add them together. I have all the information I actually need in order to graph this problem properly. And here's how you do it. I want to find the zero, or the roots, or the x-intercepts. That's basically what it means. If I want to find the zero, the roots, or the x-intercepts, it's where it hits the x-axis. Now, I can do that. Um, by doing something called the zero product property. And how I do that is, I'm going to set this y equal to zero. You just bear with me for a second. You just set it equal to zero just so you can figure out where it hits the x-axis. Not really changing anything. In fact, I'll just change it back afterwards. So if I do that, and use the zero product property, x plus one equals zero, and x subtract 3 equals 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals 3. So it hits the x-axis at negative 1, and it hits the x-axis at 3. Moreover, I know the graph is going to go up because it's a positive graph. It was, if it was a negative, it would go down. Now, a quadratic function looks like a u. It's a symmetrical u, actually. And this is where they hit the x-axis. Now, uh, I want to find my vertex, which is either my minimum or my maximum point. If the graph goes up, the vertex is the minimum point. If the graph goes down, it's the maximum point. Well, I know it hits at negative 1 and 3. So if I want to find the middle of the graph, I just try to connect them. So, OK, I'm going to go one to the, one to the right, one to the left, bam. I know the vertex is going to be at 1, because it's just going to be the middle of the graph. So what I'm going to do from this point is, I know this is where it hits the x-axis, but I want to find the middle of the value. So if I want to find the middle value, here's what I'm going to do. y equals, now I know my vertex is 1 comma something, but I don't know what that something is. So I'm going to substitute in and put it in parentheses, mind you, 1 squared subtract 2 times 1, subtract 3. 1 squared is 1, negative 2, negative, that's negative 1, negative 4. So at 1, it's going to hit negative 4, and that's my vertex, 1, comma, negative 4. My x-intercepts are at negative 1, 3. My vertex, which is the lowest point of this graph, is at 1, negative 4, or the middle of the graph. My axis of symmetry, for those of you who have been keeping up with the lessons, is the x value of the vertex, which is 1. My y-intercept, and by the way, this is all without tables, is just my c value, which is negative 3. So let's go ahead and circle that. So I know it's going to hit here at the y-intercept. I really have all I need to in order to graph this without making a table. Now some of you might say, well, you know, that seems a little far-fetched that you were able to figure it out so quickly. I mean, I agree. You have to be able to factor. 
You have to be able to recognize to use the zero product property to find the x-intercepts. You have to be able to substitute in the vertex value, which is in the middle of the x-intercepts. Well, it was 1, and when I substitute in 1, I get negative 4. Bam! My axis of symmetry is the same as my x value for the vertex. On this particular example, well, it's always going to be the same, but on this particular example, it worked out like this, and my y-intercept is at negative 3. That's really all you need to know. It's, uh, it's a little bit different, though, when you work with problems that have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. My advice to you is this. If you can factor the problem, factor the problem. But if you can't factor the problem, and not all problems are factorable either, then don't factor the problem. There are other methods that you can use, which we will go over. A uh, quick little synopsis, though. I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I already have it on the power of videotape. When you're graphing quadratic functions, and they can go either up or down, and I'm going to have all my examples go up in this particular example. I can have a quadratic function that looks like this, which means it never hits the x-axis, which means it has no solutions. I can, hit a, I can have a quadratic function that hits the x-axis once, which means it has one solution. And I can have a quadratic function that hits the x-axis twice, which has two solutions. So these are the types of functions we're working with. Factoring quadratic functions only works when the trinomial or uh, binomial, depending what we're doing, is factorable. And, not, and I have to say that not everything is factorable. And I guess when your teacher gives it you uh, a test, they're probably going to put down in instructions, solve this one by factoring, solve this one by completing the square, solve this one by the quadratic formula, solve this one by tables. You know, so your teacher will be specific on that, but I'm just trying to show you each one in its entirety as best as I can in a short little skit. Anyways, with that said, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.